The following is a Stars and Strikes doubles rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. Stars and Strikes Doubles. Stars and Strikes Doubles is sponsored in part by Somerville Lumber. This Bright Stubbles is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Chemical Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to Stars and Strikes Doubles here at the London Dairy Bowling Center. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy, and we are, of course, at semifinal week. We hope you enjoyed the singles semifinal earlier today, and now it's time to do it all again in doubles. Oh, that's right. Uh, try, still trying to get one team to win two matches in a row, and it uh, doesn't get any easier as we get along. And we are left with our top three seeded teams uh, as our final three teams in this doubles series. So let's uh, introduce the two teams that you're going to be watching this afternoon here on Stars and Strikes Doubles in our semifinal match. First of all, our number three seeds uh, back to try and win their second match in a row from East Boston, Mass, Bruno DeFeo, and his partner from Claremont, New Hampshire, Steve Vadney. Okay, Bruno comes in averaging 124, his roll-off score 683. Steve Vadney comes in averaging 128, roll-off score 678. And last week, uh, Bruno and Steve had to eke out a very narrow win over Al Bolduck and Bob Whitcomb, finally taking it 348 to 337. So by virtue of that, they move into today's semifinals against our number two seeds. And they are from Hudson, New Hampshire, Mike Poulin, and his partner from Lynn, Massachusetts, Mike Morgan. Okay, Mike uh, Poulin comes in averaging 127, roll-off score 690, and Mike Morgan 126 and 688. Okay, and the uh, runners-up in this week's show will take home third prize money. The winning team, of course, will come back next Sunday afternoon to uh, go for the series championship against our top-seeded team. More on that, and then the first of our three strings of doubles bowling here on Stars and Strikes Doubles, right after these words. Don't go away. As I mentioned, there are three teams left, the top three, as we move into the semifinals here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Bruno DeFeo and Steve Vadney will uh, move into the semifinals today against Mike Poole and Mike Morgan. And uh, then the survivors from this week will move on to the finals next week against that top-seeded team, Gary Carrington and Joe Ashline. So here we go. Steve Vadney will begin this match. And he'll begin it with a very tough split. Six, seven, nine. Not much to do here except try for the six spin on the right hand side. See so if you can just jump everything from right to left. Now if the wood comes out far enough, you may have another option. Just have to wait it out here. Looks like maybe a red line play, perhaps? I don't think so. I, no? I, he's going to try to catch it and have it come back. But the problem was a six spin. I think I still probably would have liked to try to six spin on the right-hand side. But you never know. When you get a piece of wood moving, sometimes it'll come back for you. It's a ten box, though. And we're underway. Semi-final week. And if it's anything like the last two weeks, stick around. Because they've been in some exciting matches right down to the final frames both weeks. Everything but the 8 pin for Steve Vadney. And the spare squarely on it for the mark. And leading off for the team of Poulin and Morgan is Mike Poulin. goes yes for the strike solid nine pin drop left the seven pin and for s and he got some help coming back from the right piece of wood right there 
just Mike, enough. Mike Poulin was with us in singles competition uh, early last month, dropping a match to Brian Uphold. Overall for Mike, this is his 14th appearance on Stars and Strikes, and he punches right through. Takes the nine box. Bruno DeFeo. Teaming with Steve Vadney. Bruno picked up his first win on the wins last week. And he's right on the head pin. Spare leave the three six. Sliding by to the right. Interesting, uh, last week I was talking to uh, Bob Whitcomb after the match, and of course he was disappointed he didn't convert that 4 8 in the last box. So I asked him, I, I said, when you're shooting two pins like that, are you just trying to split them? And the answer was yes. Hmm. And I said, you know, people ask me that, and I said, no, I, I'm shooting the object pin. If you go by the four pin in his case, which is the object pin, your chances of making it are slim and none. Big I, strike, Bruno DeFeo. I think he's going to change his thinking. <laughs> Shoot for the object pin. The rest will take care of itself. Strike on spare. It's actually a, a 10 box and then the strike, of course, right. for Bruno DeFeo. Mike Morgan for his first two boxes of the day. And he's just got the 8-10. <laughs> Another routine spare leaf. <laughs> Mike is from Lynn. He and his wife Kathleen have a son, Michael, and Mike works at General Electric. And he'll take an eight. Eight ten still stands. Mike was last with us uh, in the spring. He was also in the doubles tournament of champions. Seven. He combined with Paul St. Pierre. They won two matches and then lost to Steve Vadney and Joe Ashline, who eventually went on to win the tournament of champions. Spare for Mike in the fourth. A little sigh of relief there on Mike as he didn't want to hit that wood at all next to the seven pin. Got a piece of it, but not enough to deflect the ball. Still was able to manage the spare. Steve Vadney working on the strike. That's oh, a double. That's a double strike. Oh, that was, you can almost tell as soon as that ball hit that it was going to be close. Goes quick. Right there. Looking for three in a row. Not going to happen. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, way off target that time. Not like Steve Adney to be that far off his object pin. Going for the head pin that time. And didn't get the full benefit of that double strike. Six on the first one, six on the second, and then a seven frame. Now Mike Poulin to fill the mark left by his partner, Mike Morgan. He's right on the head pin, leaves the triangle. That triangle being the three, the five, and the six. Had the diamond at first, and the nine pin went down. In fact, the nine pin, I think, is laying behind the three. Another pin standing. Light hit there, doesn't carry the six. Ten for Mike. So the lead is 18 for DeFeo and Vadney through the first five. Oh. 
very full that time, punching out the 158. Probably go after the 2-4, because if you undercut it, you have a chance of hitting the 9-pin and then coming back. No. Hit the object pin, the 2, but that's all he got with just the 2-pin. Still looking at 6 pins. And a 7. Matching the 7 put up there by Steve Vadney. So here's Bruno DeFeo now. a little full also. Well, not an easy spare here. The three, the seven, the ten. The unfortunate part of it, if he tries to cut the three on the right-hand side, he may cap that wood, which would probably cost him the ten pin. Oh. <laughs> well, he got the seven ten. <laughs> <laughs> Missed the object pin, though. Participating sponsor in this series on Stars and Strikes Doubles, the fine people at Somerville Lumber, where you can get it right the first time. Visit Somerville Lumber for all your home improvement needs. Bruno's back in more of a pocket hit this time, but he's still got a split, although with the wood everywhere, this one could go. It's a 3-9 all kinds of lumber around and in between and he also has a seven pin. Get everything moving to right to left. Yes! Takes the top of that seven pin in the corner. Fine spare for Bruno. Actually the three pin is the pin that finally took out the seven. Four marks for the team of DeFeo and Vadney. Another look at Mike Morgan. Started to talk about Mike's appearances in the uh, doubles tournament of champions last spring. Of course, he won the singles tournament of champions. Came in as the number four seed in that event in the spring and won four consecutive matches. Glenn LeBlanc, Tom Morgan, his brother, Dave Richards, and Paul Berger in order to win the tournament of champions. And the first three of those matches. He threw 400 triples. The first one was a 455. <laughs> Mike, back in the pocket. This time leaves the 5 and the 8. Wants that wood to turn and it does somewhat. Still going to be a delicate shot. It's a situation we almost want to slow the ball down so the pin doesn't jump. Well, it looked like he did a little bit. Maybe took just a bit off that ball. Drove it right straight back. Matches the spare put up by Bruno DeFeo for his partner, Steve Vadney, who will finish the first game. The first two matches in this series have gone right down to the final box. And a 10. 124 through 9. Well, this is the best opening game we've had this entire ladder so far. Steve looks down at the four horsemen right plus the seven pin. Piece of wood in between. Just a little off target though. Be up over 130, already at 132. And it'll stay at 132 for the team of Vadney and DeFeo. And they would figure to have the lead after one, unless Mike Morgan, or rather Mike Poulin, could put a couple of strikes back to back here. First thing he's got to think of is just. Big fill on this mark in the eighth, and he goes right through the center. Oh, 
And I remember as a kid, we used to call this the double pinochle. Does anybody call that anymore? Call it that anymore? Uh, That's what I always heard that really? this was. No, yeah. I, yep. I really don't. <laughs> I've never heard it. Uh, is that somewhere in Marblehead terminology? I guess so, yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> Just one of those silly little things you remember from... Uh, came from Marblehead, there was nothing silly about it. It was <laughs> probably fact. <laughs> well, Mike Poulin will need a double strike if he's going to catch the 132 after game number one. And that's not going to happen, but he can get it an awful lot closer if he can pick up the three and the six for a spare. Yes, right on it. Well, with a strike, he would come with an eight. Each team with four marks. Each team, in fact, with, I know I was going to say each team with three spares and a strike, but DeFeo and Vadne have two of each, and it's an eight fill for Mike Poulin in the 10th, so 122 is the total there, and a 10-pin lead for Steve Vadne and Bruno DeFeo. After one game, we're back with game two in a minute. Well, who's this, <laughs> would you guess? Just, we'll just kind of leave that sitting there for a few seconds, see if anybody can guess who that is. I guess you can rule uh, you and me out. Yeah, I, I guess so. Because we never look that good. <laughs> Mike Morgan starts game two. Oh, he Boy, big first ball and with the nine stick around. Yep. Doesn't want that wood to roll off. In fact, the one that's moving to the left wants that one to stay around because I think that's the one that has the best angle. Well, it'll be interesting to see which one he tries. He could try both of them, get them both moving from left to right. <laughs> They're buzzing all around, Mike. Oh, they are. <laughs> Oh, he tried to go as far left as he could, and he just went a little bit too far. That's what he was trying to do, and it was there. Now oh, that's got to be a little frustrating. Watch him just clips the ten pin from behind. Moves over to lane twenty nine. Skip that one a little bit. I guess I'll ask the question. I'm sure people at home want to know. And who else to ask for you, Doug? Because you have all the answers. Why do we go from 30 to 29 instead of 29 to 30? You, you really, you really don't know. No, I really don't. Because there is a good reason for that. There is. I yeah. know there is. <laughs> That's why we do it. it yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do anything that is a good reason we're doing. Why is that? Well, I'll tell you. But I'll. I'll let the suspense build for a few minutes. Okay. How's that? See if people at home can guess why. Because if you'll note, we do the same similar pattern at uh, Park Place Lanes. We start on 32, when a baller goes up, he starts on lane 32, and then moves to lane 31. Right. Because we're not smart enough to know that it goes the other way. <laughs> no, that's, that's a good guess, but it's <laughs> not the right reason. Bruno DeFeo trying to make the cut shot here. Oh, too good. There's a situation where if the wood wasn't there, he might have made that one. And for the 10. Bruno and Steve Vadney lead by 10 coming in. Watch this now. The wood, the wood right behind it. Right behind it, and it caused the, the two pin to go right to the left side, uh, right side wall. Have a lot of people really asked you that? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> oh, I could have lied. Nice try by Bruno. Boy, two good tries there. He could as easily have had two marks.
and it'll be a nine. So nothing's changed in the first two boxes of this game. And Mike Poulin steps up again. Mike from Hudson, New Hampshire. He and his wife Judy have uh, three sons. Eight-year-old Stephen, seven-year-old Tommy, and five-year-old David. In fact, Tommy just had his seventh birthday. Seems like only yesterday we were just born. <laughs> time. So happy birthday to Tommy recently. And a spare for his dad in the third. Oh, right in the pocket. Oh, there they go. That time he kept covered all of them. Crossed over for the left-hander into the 1-3 pocket. Strike on spare for Mike Poulin. And now Steve Vadney to try and answer. Drifted off to the right. It could have been a lot worse. Looked like it might have been a half Worcester when it started. One, two, seven, and eight with Wood in back. And Steve's waiting out the Wood. Just a little too fine on the outside of the head pin. Ooh. <laughs> was able to catch it, catch the wood as it's going by. But he's really pushed the ball, those last two balls. The match dead even right now. And with the strike up by Mike Poulin, Steve Vadney will be looking to put up a mark to match it. Well, here is a funny leaf. The one, the two, the eight, and the nine. One, the three, the eight, and the nine. The two jumped over, now the three pins. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen that leaf before. Steve gave it a run, but the eight pin is still there. And it's a 10 box, and we will take a timeout. We'll reveal all of the answers that we've raised in the last couple of minutes, the, the picture that you saw a minute ago, and why we do the things the way we do. All of this and more coming up on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Don't go away. Mike Morgan now is going to work on a strike here left by his partner, Mike Poulin, in the fourth. This is game two. And whatever Mike puts on this strike will be the lead for the team. Just three so far. The one, eight, and nine. Oh, baby. Well, I always say, if you have the spread eagle, you'd like to have the five pin in the center there, and there's a good example why. Came in contact with a five and just kept, kept moving everything to the left. And Mike is so shook up, he moved over to lane 29 and reset <laughs> that machine instead. Well, we're going to have to charge him for an extra box. That's so. right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, everything's happening. Now not lane 30 then set up a full rack. Game's tough enough without setting up leaves like that. <laughs> what a great shot that was. Off target, but he gets a good break. Eight pin drop on that spare. Leaves himself the six and the nine. Couple pieces of wood. One of them's almost looking directly at him. And it cost him the shot. Cap the wood. Wood just removed the six pin, left the nine. Watch the ball. Brown doesn't do any damage at all and hit both sidewalls and the curtain in the back. So the team of Morgan and Poulin, based on that terrific spare shot, take a 10 pin lead. And now Bruno DeFeo to try and answer. Half Worcester left. Okay, now would be the time that I would like to reveal why it is that we do these things the way we do. Oh, I just, I just figured it out. Did you really? Yeah, I just figured it out. What is it? Because 
that way they can get up and start bowling on lane 30. Lane 29 might be still resetting. Well, no, because if we did it the other way, it would still work out. It would just be the different lane resetting, that's all. Right. So you don't have to wait. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> right. What is <laughs> That's a 10 for Bruno DeFeo. This uh, feels like Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> Final Jeopardy. You lose, Dan. <laughs> The reason is because, as the view, as you just noticed, Bruno DeFeo now moving over to lane 29. He started on 30. Now this box is on 29. It's so that to the viewers at home, the bowlers move from left to right. I see. Just as as they bowl the ball, because of the way our cameras are positioned, they are bowling. They are rolling the ball left to right. See, that's why. It's about as clear as mud. <laughs> <laughs> Because no, left, I to left to right being yes. the natural order of things, uh, that's that's why it is that way. I see. So you have to do the opposite out here, so it'll look right on TV. Exactly. It's just a cosmetic reason. Then. That's right. Bruno leaves two open frames, so that allows the team of Morgan and Poulin to hold on to their nine-pin lead. Remember, they trailed by ten coming in. Everybody's at home wondering, well, I'm glad he answered that asked that stupid question and I didn't have to answer it. Oh, I'll bet a lot of people at home figured it out. <laughs> they just don't have the pressure, you know, that you have when they're sitting at home watching. I mean, you have to worry about the computer and, you know, and these lights and are making, hot. making sure everything's running okay here. I mean, yeah. it's tough yeah. for you to, like, think about something else Thanks, while, Doug. while all that's going on. <laughs> How come I don't get real sincere feeling out of you? <laughs> <laughs> One, two, and ten left for Mike Poulin. And he's waiting for that piece of wood because that could determine the shot. While we're waiting, uh, person I'd like to say hello to that watches the show every week, that's Jason Berrigan. I met his parents while I was vacationing last summer, and he bowls with the Merrimack Youth Group. And he's from Nashua, New Hampshire. Nice oh. try by Mike Poulin. So, Jason, keep watching. How come you always meet these people when you're traveling and you never I, meet them when you're around here? No, all of a sudden I have to start <laughs> behaving myself on vacation. I can't, you know, let my hair down and because somebody will be watching. <laughs> Isn't that the guy that... <laughs> I just say, who are you? I'm Doug Brown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Mike back on the head pin, but look at the leaf. Two, four, seven on the left and the six pin. I got a feeling he's going to make this. Let's see. Feeling kind of vanished. <laughs> Mike thought so too. A little be extra body English there. He slid another lane over, over to lane 28, hoping it was going to come back for him. Yeah, he was trying to back that ball up a little bit, and it just faded a little bit too far to the left. So here's an opportunity for Steve Vadney. He's right back in the pocket. The four pin rocks but stays up. And looks like he'll have no wood. Oh no, it is going to hang around. And it's one of those agonizing pieces of wood that just doesn't want to seem to stop moving. And that's where it was. See, uh, what it did was try to distract Steve so it didn't hit one of his friends that was standing up, that four pin. And it worked. Sometimes when you're throwing a good ball, you just want to get up there and just keep firing away. And Steve had to wait that extra few seconds and possibly could have lost his concentration. Four horsemen with the seven pin. Steve Vadney and Bruno have yet to mark in the second game. Came in leading by 10, 132 opening game for them, 122 for Mike Poole and Mike Morgan. But the only noise has been Poole and Morgan, third, fourth, and fifth, spare strike spare. Mike Morgan now for the final two of game two. The six pin. 
and all kinds of help. Yes. For the spare for Mike. 115 through 9 with a bonus ball coming. I want to mention that the uh, finals for this series, the final roll-off that is, held at the Dover Bowl in Dover, New Hampshire, thanks to Mark Bowen and Mike Downs. Debbie and the gang over there for their help in preparing this series for us here on Stars and Strikes. Four horsemen. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> Mike's going to finish with a flurry. Made One, that look easy. 121 in the ninth. There you see the replay of the four horsemen. 131 in the tenth. Plus this ball. An eight fill and a 139 for a two game total of 261 for Mike Morgan and Mike Poulin. And some work to do here for Bruno DeFeo. Absolutely. Box is completed, they're down by 18. 28 in this game, 18 overall and they're Ooh. opposite, two spares. Well, you wonder how the five pin just stayed there. Everything else either in the pit or in the right side channel. And Bruno's right on it for the spare in the ninth. He could put another one here in the tenth then. Could be two very important marks. That's the first mark for the team here in the second game. Well, he's opposite a spare six, so anything over six he can cut into the lead somewhat, but he's still gonna have to post another one in the tenth. A little full and he's gonna get just six. But a makeable spare leave. Actually, he could almost play this on the inside of the three pin and have the ball carry him off into the wood next to the uh, four seven. Regardless, he has to have the three pin. Ooh. No. So, Mike Poulin and Mike Morgan will have a lead of more than 20. And let's wait. It'll be a nine box for Bruno, a 102, and a 234, two game total for DeFeo and Vadne. So the difference is 27. With Mike Poulin and Mike Morgan in the lead, we've got one game to go to decide it. And who was this, by the way? Dottie Larrick will know now never to give the crew a high school picture again. <laughs> That's Dottie Larrick, our scorekeeper. We'll be back with a third game in a minute. She's hiding. Steve Vadnay to lead off game three, and he and his partner, Bruno DeFeo, have 27 pins to make up. Right on the head pin, leaves the four. Dottie Lark uh, recently attended her 25th high school reunion from Nashua High, made the mistake of bringing her high school picture to the taping here, and the crew got a hold of it, and well, you know what happened after that. <laughs> Used to see Dottie on camera, but with the advent of computer scoring and so on, uh, only the only people that see Dottie now are the people who are here, live. Only a five fill for Steve on the spare. Oh, almost. So 24 in the opening two for Vadne and DeFeo. Well, a double pinochle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
with a trump card in front of the <laughs> six ten. You know, the funny thing is, I never learned even how to play Pinochle. I don't. I have no idea how to play that game. I, I don't either. I just know. I wonder if anybody. Cards. I wonder if anybody plays it anymore. It's kind of an old game. So not many people play bridge anymore either. No. Ten for Mike Poulin in the first. Well, the two four and seven left for Mike. Got some help in between the two four. No problem. Bear in the second. Bruno DeFeo, tough split. Had the shot once before. Try to split the 3 6. Doesn't have the wood this time. Oof. Practically the same place he put the ball last time, too. It's very close. And winds up with a 7 box. And that does not help Lacaz. Big nine drop, leaving the five pin again. That's the second time in this game that Bruno and Steve have had solid pocket hits and left the five pin. Getting to the point in the match now that he can't afford to miss any of these legitimate spare leaves. He's right on the five pin. For a spare in the fourth, mark number seven for the team. Poulin and Morgan have 10, and they also have the lead in the match. By 23 right now, plus whatever Mike throws on this fill ball. Off target. Just three. Well, I'm sure Bruno and Steve are thankful for that. And now he's got the triangle remaining. be a nine. So now the lead is 28 through the third, as you see, but the spare up for DeFeo and Vadne. This could be a critical box right here. Wow. Light, a little light on the one-two, but I think it was that bad a ball. Leaves himself the triangle, or, or actually the diamond, three, five, six, nine, but also has the seven pin. It'll look great if it goes. Not to be. And a nine box. We will take a timeout, and when we come back, Steve Vadne will be filling that spare in the fourth, and this thing is not over yet although there's still 27 pins down. Don't go away. Well, crucial ball in this match right now. Steve Vadney working on the spare in the fourth. It's almost imperative that he has a good fill and puts another mark up. Well, Comes up a little short on the head pin, but it could have been worse. Fill isn't bad. Can't afford to miss the head pin with this ball. Makeable spare, one, two, ten. No, he's to the left. Nine box for Steve. Five boxes remaining now for the team of Vadne and DeFeo. Gary Carrington and Joe Ashline standing by. 
to be in the finals next Sunday at 5 o'clock here on Stars Ooh. and Strikes Doubles. Steve just walked that five pin over, didn't knock it down. Of course, don't forget at new, oh my. Knock the piece of wood out, nothing else. Next Sunday at 12 noon, it'll be the finals of our singles series at noon. And then next Sunday at 5, we'll be here for the championship match here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. One of these two teams will be there against Gary Carrington and Joe Ashline. Well, two open frames. Mike Poulin was to put two marks up here. It's going to be awful tough to catch. Well, he wants the wood to stop, and it does. Looks like he's going to take the piece of wood to the left and sweep it right across. see what Mike sees, and he played the wood a little too high. Looking to get a little farther left to try and sweep it all over. Now he may try the piece of wood in front. He does for the 10 pin, 10 box. I wonder if that would have worked to well, begin with. I, I think it probably would have, but the, the best shot was the one that he played. He just missed the shot entirely. And Mike pulls that one to the right. Well, if he does not put a mark up here, this match will still be in doubt going down to the final four. And there will be no mark in the sixth. You can gain a few in count because they're opposite just the sixth frame that Steve Vadney put up in the sixth. He'll gain four big ones. Makes a 25 pin advantage now for Poulin and Morgan. Final four frames, final two for Bruno. Yep, we're into the last rotation now. Two boxes remain for each bowler. boy. <laughs> oh, the three and the nine. These are the two pins you knock out when you have a half, half whistle to the right. Seems like it's awful easy when you get ten pins up there. Let's see when you get just those two pins. Now. Nope. And that's what usually happens. The losing team on today's show will share third place prize money of $250. Winners, of course, move on. And it's beginning to look like Bruno and Steve have to catch fire here with strikes here in the end. And it's just not happening. You know, 25 pins are three big marks away. So I would almost uh, think that Bruno would have to convert this for a spare. Well, it's beginning to look like for the seventh week in a row here on Stars and Strikes Doubles, we will not have a team win two matches in a row. Certainly looking that way. Mike Morgan is all over the head pin, kicks out the seven, and he's got a spare lead. And he converts. And that may just about do it right there. Ups the lead to 26 plus the ball that he'll deliver right now. So you're right, it's going to push it up over 30 with two frames remaining. Three nine and the seven pin. A couple pieces of wood, one in between the three nine, one out in front. It's going to go right at the pins get just the <laughs> three pins. <laughs> well, going into the final two then, the lead is 33. It means if Steve Vadney were to strike out, Mike Poulin could still win it with one mark. Spare 
Error in the ninth for Steve. But now he needs strikes. Missing the head pin. And a nine box for a 106. Three string total of 340, so it is all over. Mike Poulin and Mike Morgan will win it. And we're running a little bit late on time, so as Mike Poulin finishes up, we will take a break, come back with the final score and chat with the bowlers and more here on Stars and Strikes Doubles in a minute. Welcome back to the Londonderry Bowling Center. We have uh, completed our semifinal match here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. And just to catch up on the score, let's uh, get back to the computer so you can see how uh, Mike Poulin finished that up with the spare in the ninth, the 113, and the three-string total of 374 for Mike Poulin and Mike Morgan. So let's uh, welcome up now our uh, runners-up for this week, Steve Vadney and Bruno DeFeo. We have uh, checks to pass out for you guys. Third place, uh, $250 that you will share, and uh, our congratulations. It uh, just didn't seem to happen this time. Uh, Mike and Mike got off to a good second game on you, and that was probably the difference. Yeah, it was because you know we both you know both well you know in the first string, but the second string we just fell apart. Couldn't <laughs> do nothing right. Punched, didn't do nothing right. So seemed took like, advantage of it. Seemed like every time you needed a something big to happen, you got one of those leaves that's just impossible to make. Yeah, we had, uh, like I say, 10 open boxes in the second yep. game. I had one nine pin drop that when I looked at it the first time, it was wired with a piece of wood, and then I looked, and it was <laughs> rolling back, 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 and it seemed like an hour wait there and yanked the ball. Well, we appreciate uh, you both coming by, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again later in the season. Hope thanks so. very much. Bruno and Steve, thanks very much. Congratulations. And Mike and Mike, come on up. <laughs> the, the, the two Mikes, Mike Poulin, and over on the far left, Mike Morgan. And uh, well, I guess it's nice to bowl the uh, the last box anyway, knowing that it's that it's all set. But uh, it was a close match. It was kind of in doubt even right till the end. Yeah, we weren't taking anything for granted. <laughs> we, Stevie, had a tough one, but it was a good match. Next week, now you got uh, Gary Carrington, Joe Ashline coming in. Those those guys tend to, to bowl together quite a bit, so they probably make a pretty good team. Well, let's put it this way. We hit 374. I don't think we'll be winning <laughs> anything, you know. But, you know, we did what we had to do. Mike got us out of the gate, and, you know, there's a couple of tough leaves down there. Yep. And, you know, we got a couple in a row, big fills. And, you know, get up 20 pins, it makes it tough. Good luck next week, guys. Championship match. We'll see you then. Thanks very much. All right. Michael and Michael, thanks a lot. And let's bring Dan Murphy back in here and uh, catch you up to date now. Show you at least what's happening next week. We're left with our top two seeded teams as uh, Mike Poulin and Mike Morgan make it a victory over DeFeo and uh, Vadney, and I guess that's the good news for them. The bad news is, as they go into next week's match against Gary Carrington and Joe Ashline, we're still waiting for a team to win two matches in a row this year here on Stars and Strikes Doubles. Well, if I was Mike and Mike, I'd be feeling good about that because uh, odds are in their <laughs> favor that somebody's going to do it, and why not them? All right, well, we hope that you'll be joining us next Sunday afternoon here on The Winds. Remember, it's championship week at 12 noon on Stars and Strikes in singles, and then again at 5 o'clock next Sunday afternoon for here on Stars and Strikes Double. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, Doug Brown, have a good week, everybody. Bye-bye. Derek. -bye.